Hello. Let me see if this is working. We've had a few technical difficulties here today. So please uh, bear with us here. Okay. Yeah, I think it's working, Tracy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! So for those of you who missed this, um, let me just give a quick introduction <laughs> again about my inspiring entrepreneur guest. Tracy Phillips, who is a video strategist, and she's going to be talking about, she did talk a, about, but again, at some point, we'll talk about her journey as an entrepreneur, and also will be giving us some amazing advice on how to use videos for our business. And so we were kind of talking about this, Tracy, but what would you say to someone who is Yay. not using video. Yay, it's working. Yay, Thanks, actually, actually. thank you. <laughs> um, what would you say to someone who's not using video for their business? They're just maybe doing ads, they're doing blog posts, they're maybe yeah. putting photos, mm -hmm. things like that, but are you not need using video. video. You need video. And I know it can be scary, um, but if you think about an online relationship, video is like a first impression. Mm -hmm. And so if someone actually gets to see you with like they see you and can connect with you, you are way more likely to actually make a connection and, mm -hmm. and build your audience. So it's very difficult through text or um, even pictures, photos to, to give an idea of what you're like. Whereas on video within 10 seconds, you can say, Oh my gosh, I really like that person. Or I connect with that person. Or, I love what they're saying. Um, and so I have found, I, I was saying before that, you know, I don't, even though I come from a 16 year production background, I did not like being in front of the camera. I loved telling people what to do behind the camera and yeah. tell them what to do. Um, but it's awkward. Um, I love Facebook Live for what it's done for my business and, and for my confidence. Um, but it's awkward at first. You're like, I'm talking to nobody. And it takes a little <laughs> yeah. bit of time to get there, right? It's a little awkward, right, Wendy? Right. And so, but but it's all about consistency and practice. Um, you know, I have, you know, I I have best-selling authors as clients. So they're really good writers, but that does not okay. translate to video. Right. right. So they need a video personality. They need to be able to translate that really good writing into their personality on video. So it just takes time and people don't want to hear that a lot of times. But like if you're starting your business or even thinking of starting an online business, um, you know, Cisco just came out with a, a, a study and they said, that video in 2020 is going to be four times as much as it is right now. So if you think that video is getting big now, wow. and that's less than three years. So in less than three years, it's going to be four times what it is right now. And if you don't kind of get on the train right now, um, I think it's going to pass you by. And so okay. it, it's baby steps. You can do it in baby steps. You can do it with your iPhone you, or, you know, your smartphone. So that's what I love right now about video. Someone, I've been in video for a while. This right. is not the way it was. I mean, the cameras used to be huge and, and really bulky and heavy. And, you know, every, there was so much mm -hmm. setup. I don't have any setup. I have an open window. I have an open window. That's what I have in a computer. Yeah. That's what I have, right? So like, if you think about how far we've come just in, you know, the last five years, um, I think now is the time to really like harness the power of video. And there is so much power behind it because I think it's really your, your greeting card. And beyond that, I like to say, it's like your virtual hug to oh, your audience yeah, yeah, because you get yeah. to really, um, yeah, so it's it's a touch point. It's a touch point that you wouldn't normally have in in a marketing situation. Right, and I can definitely attest to that because I've been doing video probably for almost a year now. And when I look at the videos I did nine months ago when I forgot, <laughs> like I literally can't even watch them. It's it's yeah, so we all have that painful, right? But but you need to start somewhere. So right. yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, just for the audience, if you guys have questions for Tracy, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll ask her. So 
Okay, so say I'm a person who I have a business where I'm starting a business. Yeah. And I haven't been doing videos. What would you say are like the first couple of steps that I should start taking? I would say start with Facebook Live. Okay. Um, And the way I would start with Facebook Live is they don't have to be long. There's all these articles out there that they're like, in order for Facebook Lives to be, um, you know, ranked and stuff like that, you're not trying to get ranked. You don't need to do a 30 minute video. You need to do a five minute video. And if five minutes sounds not very fun, then do a one minute video. I did it, I ran a challenge um, two weeks ago and the point of it, it was called Live in Five, was Mm -hmm. to get people comfortable by the fifth day going live within my private group for Mm -hmm. one minute, for one minute. Okay. And they all loved it. It was amazing. So it was really fun because they were all like the year, but they were prepared. They were prepared to go live for one minute. And so I would say, start small. And if you're like, I don't know what to say, what do people ask you about your business? Or what is it like, I have come, like there are common theme questions that I answer all day long. That's where I started. So write down a bunch of those and, and don't fire hose the information, Mm -hmm. one topic per live. Okay. So just answer one question and the reason why and that type of thing. I mean, I have little rules for it's nice to send them somewhere else with a call to action, but don't worry about any of that stuff when you're first starting out. Just kind of script out. And but when I say script out, just bullet points. Hi, I literally, I wish I should have had it by me. I when I script it out, I literally write, hello, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, like teach, teach, teach. You know, like I usually have three takeaways or four takeaways. I wrap it up and then we move on and I just tell them thanks and see you next week. So consistency is one thing I, I'm sure you can attest to also is like picking one time, one place and just, you will get more and more comfortable to the point. And I promise, I can promise that like, you'll start to actually enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And that seems like very far fetched for someone who's really scared of hitting that button. But to be honest, the scariest part is actually just hitting that button. Once you start going live, it's um, you'll get used to it. And so is there, are, are there certain things you should do to prepare? Like you've talked about, you just kind of talked about this, but um, are you suggesting writing out a couple of points? Always. Beforehand? Okay. Yeah. So, so my, not- my, yeah, my, my, you know, I'd say my, what, what I sell to people, what I work with people on, whether it be Facebook lives or full length launch videos is structure. This is okay. where most people go awry. And what right. I, I, I lovingly call video vomit. Yeah. Because people just get on there and then they talk and they don't know what they're saying and they don't know when to stop and they don't know where it's going. You need to know where it's going. So if, if the thought of actually scripting it out terrifies you, that's okay. But definitely you want to have an I like I literally tape it behind my phone or behind my computer so I can keep an eye on it because you do get nervous. And yeah. I look at it less, the more that I've gone live, I, the less I look at it. But I always script out just at least an outline um, because I want people to leave with something. I don't want to just show up and fire hose them with information. That's not really helpful to them. I want them to have a takeaway, something that they can do. So mm-hmm. I did offer you, and you're more than welcome to send it out as like the five C's of, of video success and clarity is you know, number one is like, right. you want to have one clear message. What do, what do you want them to know? Right. And so it's, it's in video, in anything, in all of your marketing, it is about your audience. People get very caught up in themselves mm-hmm. and what you know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know what you do. I want to know what you can do for me. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's what that's. And so that's where the Facebook live starts. So yes, when I talk about like, I mean, I get, I get, um, a lot of pushback from people are like, I'm just not a scripting person. And I've seen their videos and I'm like, that is clear. <laughs> it's clear you're not a scripting person, but it's hurting your business. Like, so, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't help to be consistent if you're consistently doing video vomit. You want to be consistent right. with the fact that, I mean, I keep all of my Mondays musings and motivations. I think one of them went over 10 minutes, but I try to keep them in 10 minutes and under but I also know my audience. So that's where with my students, with everybody, I start with the audience. Like, do you know your audience? Do you know where they're hanging out? Do you know how much time they have? I met a mom who teaches other moms and she was releasing a four video series. And I'm like, how many moms do you know who have time to watch that? Yeah. How about true. doing a challenge or something on Facebook where they can maybe catch the video later and have some takeaways. So it's really kind of knowing how you want to use it. But I would tell 
everybody, regardless of where you are in your business, to do Facebook Live. Okay. And Unless you know you, that they're not hanging out there. How do you get, like, how, how do you promote your videos? How do you get into a position where the videos are engaging, but that people are actually watching them? Because I know that I there's pay. a lot of content out there. Sorry? I pay. Well, when I first started doing the videos, I was doing it you know, to practice and get used to it and, and also right. to really clarify, you know, okay, what am I offering? But now each Monday, I then either boost or more recently, I turn the video into an ad, which is way uh, cheaper. Right. And then you get a lot more views and, and it's helped with a lot of things. But of all my videos, I mean, people still are seeing them and I'm still getting the numbers roll around, you know, and into the thousands, like, and I don't pay a lot. I pay like $20 a week. You know, I'll just roll it for a couple of days and get some views and get people, but I get lots of random people on there um, being exposed to my business, which is nice. It's really nice. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, so, you know, you do have to, you're not, it's not hope marketing. You're not going to pop up on Facebook live and people are going to come to you. It doesn't happen like that. And, and also, yeah. you know, Facebook is a social platform. It should be used as a social building. So you're trying to build your list, build your audience. It, it's not a selling platform. You shouldn't be selling from Facebook lives. I mean, I've done it before, but it's strategically done, um, you know, at the end of a challenge or something like that. Uh, but it's not something where I would say I'm going to launch from Facebook. Facebook is you're building a community. And so, and building a community takes time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because like, I think some people might assume, oh, okay, well let's sell using videos, but yeah. to your point, it, it's about building a relationship yeah. and building right. a rapport really with your clientele. It's connection. You're building yeah. connection. Yeah. Okay. So what are some of the most, when, cause obviously a lot of people are doing Facebook lives. Yes. What are some of the most common mistakes you see that people are making when they do their, their videos? There's three. I'm glad okay. you asked this question. The first one is they, they do portrait. They hold their phone like this. Yeah. And phones were designed for 1080p, so they were designed okay. to actually, be, it, it'll be the highest quality, it just looks better. So you, you'll see all, and this is kind of a professional thing, it's a nitpicky thing, Yeah. but um, you should always be holding your phone um, horizontally. Okay. Um, it'll look better, you won't get those lines on the side, but that's, and that's an easy breezy one to fix. The second yeah. is audio. Um, the farther away you are from your phone. So I literally, this is how I, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little Joby. It's called the Joby Gorilla Tripod. Okay. And my, my phone clips into this. Okay. And I use my, I have a Symphonize headset that I, the, the one that I'm wearing right now. It's just like a little earbuds. Um, but if I wasn't, I would stay super close to my phone because the farther you are away from your phone, the more echoey the audio is going to be. Okay. Um, and again, does it matter? Not so much your content. And then the, the third one is content. I mean, I, we could do a fourth with like where you are and, and we can certainly get into that. If like some people don't know where to shoot. Um, right. It's great if you could have some sort of light source on your face. Mm -hmm. um, I am literally facing a window right now and it's raining. So it's enough light to at least light me up. Yeah. Um, and I like a little distance behind me. So if you have a place in your home, so I do something called virtual scouting with my clients where we get on Zoom or FaceTime and they literally, it's like HTV on crack. Like we walk around their home and I tell them the best place in their home to film. Okay. Right. Because I'm yeah. pushing this Facebook live, but then everybody's objection of course is, yeah, but I don't know where to, I don't know where to film. And right. so I help them with that is, and I've even recorded a few where we're, you know, we just go around their house and I sometimes I'll pick art from one room and have them like, you know, almost design a set. Um, but I like a little distance behind. So Wendy, right now you're like pretty, and, and again, yeah. it doesn't matter if your content is good, yeah. but if we're nitpicking on video stuff, then it's nice right. to just have a little bit of distance because you're focusing yeah. then on you. Gotcha. Um, but content, you know, the biggest thing is your content. It's structuring um, content that people actually want to hear. 
Mm -hmm. And that takes work. Like, you know, you have to actually sit down and think about that. So preparation is what I'm hearing. Consistent prep, prep, prep. Yeah. Preparation. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you, <laughs> uh, so I, I have a few friends who have just started doing video and I think in particular women have a tendency yeah. to look at their videos and be like, oh my gosh, like th th there's a hair that looks weird and like my makeup, it looked a little smudge or smudge yeah. something like that. Like what, what would you say to kind of the natural? Get self over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you're letting that hold you back from going on video, then that is really sad because mm -hmm. because that's that's not what people want from you. Yeah. They, like the fact that you're going to let your looks or the way you feel about yourself stop you from sharing your message mm -hmm. is something I work with a lot of women on. Um, you know, I do have a little download the what to wear because people love to know like what colors work on video, what colors don't. And it's more of a tongue in cheek fun thing and over yeah. my 16 years like people have shown up with stuff and I'm like whoa you should not be wearing that on camera you know but how would you yeah. know yeah but the truth of the matter is um I have a two minute makeup routine that I do when I go live um and I do that for myself I don't think that anybody else cares about that I'm over 40 so like I do that for me um yeah but if I had to not go live because I was running late with my makeup, it wouldn't happen. I just go on without makeup on because I yeah. know that my content, like people are waiting for my content. And when we talk about like the consistency, you know, when I first started doing lives, like no one was there, no one's on the live. And yes, it's a little bit hard to get over that, but people were seeing it afterwards. And then within just a couple of weeks, people were emailing me, Hey, I didn't, are you going live? And I, and strangers, not my mom and my sister, you know, they were, so it's, It'll build your audience. So you kind of have to get over yourself look wise. Like, right. yeah. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's how it is, right? Like you, you might notice something about yourself, but no one else is going to notice. No. That, right? They're going to be focused on like what you said, the yeah. content. So when you're with, what kind of services do you offer to your clients? If, if people in the audience are interested in working with someone like you, how would how would you work together with them? That's a great question, Wendy, because I had to kind of assess that. I started backwards. I started with private coaching for launch videos and kind of stuff like that, and then got completely overwhelmed, like most people do who are doing private coaching, because I'm like, yeah. oh, this is not scalable. And so then I started doing group workshops. I most recently um, have launched something called Video Lab. And that, that literally is for beginners. I don't have another one starting. If someone's interested, I mean, obviously, Wendy, you can share my email. And I'll put them on a wait list. Um, and that's an online course, the video lab? Right now, it's hybrid, which is why it's not available evergreen. So okay. it will eventually live on its own. But right now, I'm offering. Um, so there's it gets dripped every Monday. And then we meet on Thursday to go over. So there's a lot of workshopping. Um, but it's for newbies. It it starts with who your audience is, and then we work on video goals, and then we work on clarifying your message, and then we work on like getting comfortable on camera. Like so, it kind of runs through the basics. Um, so yeah, it took me. I went backwards, but now I have something for for newbies, which is nice. Okay, and what would you? Bracket like for because I I mean I work with a lot of people, and I feel like they're they're always like how do i get more likes how do i get more Doesn't views matter. how Doesn't do i matter. Get okay T so tell me more about that your likes and views don't matter your emails matter so okay. if you want more emails go live and send people to go give like so give them some sort of wonderful piece of content that they feel comfortable giving you an email but if you're just i can go to a pr company and buy 200,000 likes but they might not be people who know or even care about what I do. They're just buying mm -hmm. likes. And so it's a false sense of accomplishment. Um, mm -hmm. And I do, I see a lot of people attaining this. I've turned down clients mm -hmm. who have said to me, well, I have 250,000 people who like me on Facebook and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, but I'm not willing to do lives because I don't really want to be on Facebook. And I'm like, well, then if that's where your audience is, 
and you have so many people there waiting for you, but you're not willing to be in there and actually connecting with them. It's all about connection. And so video is a connector. And so if you're not really willing to actually connect with your audience, the likes don't matter. None of that matters. It's mm -hmm. how are you nurturing this relationship? And so, um, I, I mean, I did it too. I got caught up. I'm like, I don't have a whole lot of likes. I don't have a whole like this. And then, you know, someone said to me, they're like, but your business, like you're too busy right now. Like you, you can't even take another client. So you're doing something right. And I'm like, right. Oh, right. Okay. So then I, yeah. So I had to step back and say like, the likes don't matter, you know, like again, especially if you can purchase something like that. Um, yeah, the video is to be used as a connector. It should be used as a nurturing um, tool. Uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so it shouldn't be used just to like bolster likes. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I completely resonate with that because I, I think I've seen people like they'll start doing videos and then they don't get a lot of likes and they're like, why am I doing this? And then they stop. Yeah. Um, yeah sad to see that because to your point it's like they their message still needs to get through to people and not only that and i just saw levi had a question which is a great lead in well done levi about how to <laughs> repurpose it um so if you if you're going to use facebook live to get comfortable then download that video mm -hmm. re-upload it to youtube and now you have a searchable video and youtube is google and so you're helping your seo because it's something searchable so that's another thing when we talk about content like what are people asking you what are people searching for in your niche what are you like these are things that i do as facebook lives because yeah there have been times there's nobody on with me i don't really care because you i keep doing it um you know whether you're a fan or not marie forleo was doing she does these little tuesday videos and and yeah. i don't really even follow her anymore but i read an article about her once that she was doing that for over a year with no response and she okay. just kept at it and she almost gave up and now look at i mean like yeah. that was she says the video is what actually propelled her you know forward and so she did that for a year and she was doing highly produced videos but right. for a year uh, answering questions that like you know no one was really listening and then suddenly you know it just kind of took up so so it's a great way of clarifying your message it's a great way of repurposing and levi another thing like you could you know send an email out and link right and pardon me i have to i have to text my husband who's downstairs because i have 22 percent battery power <laughs> sorry about that um, well, we actually should probably wrap up here. Okay. Anyway. Um, but I will make it a point to put a link to your website. Okay. And, um, is that is that the best way for people to get a? Get yeah, a I mean, on you? I think right now my website. I don't. I'm working on my homepage because I would currently actually today working on that. Um, so it'll bring you the homepage, brings you the blog. But actually, if it sends you, it's videoscriptsuccess.com. Um, like, you know, troll around in the blogs and read because again, that's how I repurpose. I send out a blog. The blog is also my Facebook Live for that Monday most of the times. And so I'll drive people, like the Facebook Live will just be a couple minutes, but then the blog is the full information. So definitely, um, you know, troll around in there because I think there's a lot of great beginner mm -hmm. video info. And then Levi had one last question. How long should one go on Facebook Live if no one is watching? For as long as you need to. I have a, um, I have something I say about how long a video should be. And a video is like a mini skirt. It should be long enough to keep me interested. No, I did that backwards. Long enough to cover the essentials and short enough to keep me interested. So there's no wrong or right timing for video. This is something I get. So Levi, don't worry if no one's there. Like you should be delivering them as if there's a thousand people watching. Right. Uh, because they will watch on the replay or if you boost it, then people will see it. So if you're doing it and you're kind of like deflated, no one's here, um, I act as if, you know, as if there's a thousand people watching. Right. That's, That's a great question. Right. Yeah. Actually, I did. I lied. I have one last question. Is yeah, there fine. a certain time of day or that you recommend doing the Facebook live videos or, or is it just whenever the person? You know, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, 
you have to know your audience. So I was going live at 2 p.m. on Mondays, and I don't know if people here are familiar with Jeff Walker, but he does this launch thing, and a lot of his students are my clients, and so there was an overlapping thing, which I didn't realize, where he was holding his mastermind calls at that time. And so, so, oh, so okay. a, few, a few of them emailed me and they're like, we can't come to your lives because it's at the same time as our mastermind call. And I was like, well, right. let's change that. So I started going live at noon. Um, so I think there's, it's not like webinars where it's like Thursdays at four are the best time. It's really right. dependent on your audience and survey them, send, send them an email. If you don't really have one, put it up on Facebook, ask people like, when are you home? When are you around? What's the best time? Cause you may need to finagle that around, but then be consistent. I'm going to be here every Monday at noon. I'm going to be here every Wednesday. I'm going to be here. You know, I have one client who does um, Friday night lives. And she goes live after work every Friday at like six. And it's hilarious, you know, and people yeah. wait for it. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I think um, one of the things that you pointed out that I've been using and I think is super important for people is to repurpose your videos, mm -hmm. like you're saying, because some of my videos are have been really engaging, a lot of participation, but some of my videos just kind of, they fall flat, yeah. you know? And you you really don't know yeah. until you put yourself out there. And for the videos that have really, like I've had people in my business um, call me and say, I watched that video that totally resonated. When yeah. can we start working together? So yep. yeah, I, but if I, if I wasn't consistent, if I, if I had just given up on those times where the, it seemed like people weren't really watching or weren't yeah. interested, then I would have missed potential opportunities. Yeah, so. and that's what I said. Like it's kind of like it's a lab. It's an it, it's an experiment um, in just getting comfortable, you know. Yeah. And eventually you will, and then eventually you'll get used to kind of talking to no one. Okay. I saw Levi had another question. What book would you recommend to read that talks about video creation on Facebook? Are there videos? There's or no one. Um, there's no one that I know that does like specifically. I haven't found a book because I. Maybe you need to write that book, Tracy. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. There's not much to it. You hit go live. So the book okay. that you're looking for is on the structuring of a video because there okay. there is no fancy tech to going live on Facebook. You like right. can you use you know third party software like Be Live or OBS? Yes, of course you can to make it a little fancier. Um, those programs in themselves are like, but that's not where I would start. That's not a jumping off point. Books I would suggest is The Art of Explanation, which okay. is a great way of clarifying your message. So right. it all comes back to or Zen presentation, which has to do with PowerPoint and keynotes, but actually is a fabulous book on, again, structuring your message. What is important to your audience? So um, and this is one of those questions I get tons of tech questions. Most people asking tech questions don't want to put themselves out there. They're a little bit scared. Yeah, I, so I'm telling you, Levi, you don't need a book. You just need a finger. <laughs> and you do like that's all it takes to go live there is no like i mean i have like a little three-part like i can tell you levi if you want it it's just like a here's this screen here's this screen here's this screen if you want to know what you're going to see before you go live on your your phone but that's it it's yeah that's it i love it thank you so much tracy i feel of super course. inspired to Yay. take my video game higher <laughs> And I definitely encourage all of you guys to check out Tracy Phillips and her website, which I will put in the comments. And as we talked about, I'm going to be running this recording. Uh, Tracy will be running the recording. Yeah. And so if you have further questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments and Tracy or myself will get back to you. So Thank you so much, Tracy. Of course. Thank you for sharing me with your audience. Yes, my pleasure. I learned a lot and look forward to catching you guys next time in my next interview of Inspiring Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.